What's up guys? Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we can use Quantifier Pro in order to quickly price a project inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one thing to note is right now, Profile Builder and Quantifier Pro are both on sale through, uh, looks like the end of May. So if you have been looking at these extensions, they're currently on sale right now. You get a better deal if you get them both together. I will link to this in the notes down below if you have been interested in these. You can also look at the others um, individually if you decide that you want to do that. So just be aware of that. I will link to that in the notes down below. But let's say that we wanted to model out a deck. So we'll just say that these are going to be modeled out as two by eights, just for simplicity's sake. So we'll go ahead and say this is going to be 16 feet wide. And I'm going to make this a component and we'll just call this two by eight end cap. I always like to label these. Um, because labeling these is going to allow you to see what they are in your final report. But I'm just going to make a copy of that. And let's say this is going to be 20 feet long. So we've got our two end caps. And I want to go ahead and model out another end cap. We'll call these like side cap or something like that. We'll call this two by eight side cap. There's probably a more technical term for it, but I'm not going to worry too much about that for right now. And we're going to make a copy of that, right? So basically what we've done is we've created the perimeter of our object. And so now if we were to select these objects and use Quantifier Pro, what we can do is we can figure out the overall footage of these that we have. So if I select these and then go into Quantifier right now, we can run a component report that will give us the overall length of these components. And if we click on this button right here, it'll give us an actual report in here. Notice how this is giving us a length in inches right now. So what we could do instead is let's say you wanted this to be in feet. You could just go to your settings and you could set your length to feet instead of inches. You can also do metric in here if that's what you use. But now if I run this, I can see that for two by eight, I've got a total length of 32 feet of end cap and about 40 feet of the side cap, right? So I can use this to figure out the length of components that we have in here. Well, what this does is this gets really powerful when you start adding your interior framing. So, and again, I'm sure there's gonna be some kind of like central framing or something like that. I'm not worried about modeling a physically accurate deck right now. This is more to demonstrate how you can use this to get quantities. But let's say that I had interior two by eights as well. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a component. We'll call this two by eight interior framing. And I can use the move tool in copy mode to copy these out at 12 inch spacing, right? So I can set this to be 12 inches. Then I can type in like times 25 or times 20, looks like it'll actually be times 18. But notice how now I've got all this interior framing in here as well. Well, the cool thing about that is now if I select all of this, I get the full quantity of everything that's in here. Um, so I get the overall length of this. So I can see that I have 371 lineal feet of two by eight framing. And then if I click on the report, right, it's going to give me the actual interior pieces right here. And so we can use this to really quickly add and get data out of things in our model, um, which we can then use to apply price data or anything like that. Let's say we did the same thing though. Let's say that our top pieces were two by sixes. Um, so let's say five and a half, inch and a half. But let's say you had two by sixes that we're gonna run this way. We can make this a component and we could call this two by six walking surface. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a copy. We'll move this an extra, call it a quarter of an inch out. And then we'll just use the move tool in copy mode again to create these additional pieces, right? So times 15, say times 32. So there's a few different ways that we could do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take them all and I'm just gonna move them over a little bit so that they're aligned with this back wall right here. We'll get a little bit of overhang here. In real life, you might cut that, but since we're using this for quantities, um, I think it's gonna be okay. But again, if we select the whole thing within Quantifier, notice how this is updating. And you wanna make sure you've checked the box for auto refresh, but now I can see an overall length, but I can also get a report on the lineal footage of each one of these. So I can see the actual footage of two by six walking surfaces that we're gonna place in here as well. 
So um, this is really powerful for pulling those quick quantities in here. You could also use it um, for things like railings. So let's say for example that we wanted to use one of the railings that comes within Profile Builder. But then let's go ahead and just jump in and just select one of the profiles that are kind of built in with these. So I'm just gonna click on this button right here. And there's a little, uh, there's a little present looking folder in here that has some pre-built railings. You can select other railings as well, but we're gonna go ahead and pick this one for now. And so let's go ahead and let's say that we were to select this railing assembly right here. So it's kind of a metal rail um, with like aircraft cable. But what we could do is we could use this in order to basically add this rail around the perimeter of this. So we could click on this corner right here, this corner right here, and this corner right here. So basically what that does is that generates this rail in here. Well, the cool thing about that is that's actually built with like verticals in here as well as extrusions. So if we were to use the profile builder rail that's in here and then open it up in quantifier, you can see how if we go into the component report of what we have selected, you can pull the length of the top rail, the bottom rail, as well as the overall length of the uh, aircraft cable that's in here. So um, this aircraft cable, right, you can see that you've got 221 feet of that plus 135 feet of that. So you can figure out your overall length of aircraft cable. And so you can start applying cost data to each one of these. So for example, let's say I was to pick um, one of these two by six or two by eight interior framing objects, right? I could come in here and apply cost data to this. So we could select the object and then you click the plus button right here to add a cost item to it. And so let's say I figure with material and labor, it's gonna cost me $56 or something like that to put each one of these in place. Um, so I don't know exactly what it is with current market values and everything, but let's say you had a current unit cost of 56. You could also add things like your waste. So if you have like a 5% waste factor, you could put that in here as well as whatever your tax rate is, right? So maybe like 7.65 or something like that. Click on OK. Well, Now, each one of those, because it's a component, now has a cost associated with it. So now if I was to select all of these, right? I only have cost data in for these objects right now, but I can see what those objects are going to be. So I've got like $1,200 worth of cost associated with this object. And you can also use the cost inspector and so what the cost inspector is going to do is that's going to allow me to come in here and click on objects that have costs associated with them or cost items. So for example, these end pieces right now um, have an item associated with them, but not a cost. But let's say these end pieces were going to run me $150. So now everything with cost data associated with it is green right? Everything that doesn't have cost data associated with it is red. So I can see what has a cost and what doesn't. So if I was to select this end piece, for example, I could come in here and really quickly add a cost. So this is going to be very close to those interior pieces like this. I'm going to click on OK. But now you can see how these turn green because I had costs associated with them. So this allows you to see visually what objects have costs associated with them. And so you can also come in here and add overall costs in your model cost data. So for example, I could also add like a mobilization cost or something like that. So I could add mobilization and that's just gonna be applied to your whole thing. And we'll just set our unit to lump sum on that one, but we could set our unit cost to, I don't know, $750 or something like that. Well, then that cost is gonna get applied overall as well. All right, and then we can also take this data, and I haven't applied cost to all of it, but we can take this data and we can run different kinds of reports. So cost detail, cost summary, other things like that. And so if I click on cost detail and then click on this button right here, you can see how this is gonna apply, um, or it's gonna show me the things that have costs associated with them. Um, we could also run like a cost summary report if we wanted to do that. Or we could do what I'm gonna do, which is run the overall component report, which is gonna give me more detail. But then within this, what I can do is I can take these items and I can actually export them to an Excel file. So we could ex export this to something called cost data, for example, and we could open it up in Excel and then all that data is gonna be dropped in here, right? So you've got your different component names in here. Um, you've got the different parts and pieces that are in here. So then you can take them and you can start applying additional costs. So you can see how you've got a total cost over here, but you could also set this up to calculate your costs in here as well.
And then note that in the new version, there have been some changes in here. Like for example, instead of a CSV export, it's actually doing an Excel export. So now it's gonna export directly to Excel rather than CSV. Um, we've also got Excel cost data on Mac, which uh, for those of you that use Mac, Mac could definitely be useful, as well as some changes to the way that the profile members are calculated. So now in addition, if you use something like double cut to cut an opening in here, your quantities are now going to reflect your wall without that opening opening um, inside of it. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Um, as an estimator, I really like tools like this that allow you to quickly and easily apply cost to things. So I will link to the sale on this page. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought if you're using this tool. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.